captured the daily seasonality, annual seasonality. We have included sine and cosine values. We have included sine and cosine values. And if you use this formula, sine of 2 pi t divided by 365.25, since we have leap years, right? Right, uh, 366 days, once in four years you have a leap year that constitutes to 0.25 and this way you have come up with. There is an article which is written that if you use sine and cosine values, you would be able to capture seasonality, especially if you have daily data. Given that context, if you want to forecast the rain at time period t, then you need to consider rain at lag 1 and consider sine and cosine values. And that will help you capture the seasonality. Right? That will basically help you capture the seasonality. Now, let us proceed further. So these two would capture the seasonality. If you notice here, we, we need to employ logistic regression because the output that we want to know is, will it rain or will it not rain? Zero means it will not rain, one means it will rain. However, if we replace this with rain, can we guarantee that it's going to fall within this range? And will it give us the probability values? No, it will not. Hence, rather than taking the output variable as rain t, we look at the odds. First of all, we need to look at probability value, probability of rain occurring. Right. Probability of rain occurring to the probability of rain not occurring is called as odds value. Odds. Now, what is log of odds? If I take a log of this, it's called as logit. Remember, the output would be logit. However, when we draw inferences, it will be on odds. Or you can directly look at the probability values also. These are the just curves. This is a sigmoid curve in the logistic regression uh, on cross-sectional data. We have already discussed these things. So I'll proceed further. So we, we have replaced the output variable which, which was earlier rain at t with logit. So if logit value is so much and odds is e raised to the power that. It's all the same thing, right? You have output variable which is equal to beta naught plus beta 1x, so on and so forth, until whatever values you have, say beta 3x3. Now once you solve this, you will put it in this equation ey by 1 plus e raised to the power y. Right? Now this is probability. Probability by 1 minus p is called as odds, and odds is will be equal to e power y. When you solve it, you would get this. And if you apply log on both sides, you'd get back this equation and that's called as logit. This is called as logit. If you apply log for dots. Okay, so let me erase this. Right, so in this way, probability, odds, log of odds. So if you want to know in probability of whether it's going to rain or not, it's 1 divided by 1 plus e raised to the power minus logic. This is a simple calculation basically. All right. So now let us do a hands-on on this sheet. And uh, we will try to understand on how to perform this. Okay. Now that we have this data set, we have to split this data set first into, you know, training data and validation data. Since we have a huge data, we have some 4,300 odd data points, we would not, you know, look at, you know, our normal way of proceeding with training and validation data. So I'll go to this uh, and let me partition using time series here. And oh yeah, we have all these values. We have rain, rain at lag one, time index, 
these two values. Data variable is so much. I am here going to specify percentage and say I change this to 80-20. So 80% of the data I want to place it in training data and another 20% in validation data. There we go. So we are splitting this data into training and validation data. And once we have, it's a problem, let me click on validation data. You have three, four, five, nine, until all these, which are your uh, validation data, basically. So what we have to do now is, we have to build logistic regression. So all we need to do is go to predict here or rather classify and here you have an option called as logistic regression so let us click on that logistic regression and we need to choose the output variable output variable of interest is rain the output variable is that and uh, we want to choose all of the other variables not the time variable of course we need these three variables, click on next, and we are specifying the cutoff value as 0.5, and here we can change the success. Here we have only two classes that we are dealing with, will it rain or will it not rain, and um, let me click on next. So we need not make any changes here, we'll just click on finish. I'm waiting for the output to appear here. Now in this output, you have these values, right, um, and uh, here we have, sorry, so here you have these values, regression model output, you have the, you know, beta naught value, beta 1, beta 2, and beta 3 values, and also, you have confusion matrix. Now how do you make sense of this confusion matrix basically and how do you calculate sensitivity and specificity if you were to calculate? Now if you look at this, we, oh it's already calculated, you have the sensitivity and specificity values which are already available here. So if you want to manually calculate this, we, we know the formula and the formula would be here for sensitivity and specificity, right? It's true positive by true positive plus false negative, and specificity is true negative by true negative plus false positive. Using that formula when you calculate it, you'll get these values, right? So that is how uh, you need to look at, uh, you know, the confusion matrix and try to calculate these uh, specificity and sensitivity values. But otherwise, we have this, we have these values, and um, this is how we calculate. So let me help you by writing this particular equation here. Now, um, I'll consider these values, and uh, let me write it here. So if you were to write it, then log it of raining is equal to minus 1.04 plus 1.129 and you multiply it with specific time period, whatever time period you're uh, looking at, that is uh, rain at lag 1, you put that value rain at lag 1 and minus 0. 217, you multiply it with the function which is sine of 2 pi t divided by 365, this equation, this equation. So here we are replacing, uh, we have beta naught, beta 1, beta 2 and beta 3 values and you know the time index t, you know the constant pi value, you solve it to get one value. Once you get that value, we are not done yet because this is a formula. So what all we are doing is we are trying to get the logit value 
and once we get the logit values we replace that logit in this particular equation 1 divided by 1 plus e raised to the power minus logit and uh, you would get the probability value right and here we will get a probability value of roughly 0.21 okay if you solve this you get roughly 0.1. So this is how we need to actually calculate. And this is logistic regression for forecasting.